I feel like I want to talk about how religion has this tendency to bring the wrong definition of a word to that word and then insert it into it and create a text that says something other than what it actually says. Sin, the, the legal definition of sin, so here we go with more legal definitions. The legal definition of sin is non-compliance to the rules. So whatever the rules are, in, in particular, at the time of this writing, the, the rules were the law of Moses, but it can be whatever rules your denomination have, whatever rules your society has, whatever rules your religion has, whatever rules your atheism has, whatever rules your intolerance has, it really doesn't matter. Someone doesn't comply to those rules. You are what you do, and your value is based on how well you do it. So the legal definition of sin is when you you're not keeping the rules, um, and that's that's to simplify that. But what sin really is is that it's a focus on shortcomings. So the legal definition is that you have shortcomings. The grace definition is that you focus on shortcomings. The legal definition says that sin is to miss the mark. The grace definition says there's a mark. Why did you set up a mark? Why are you judging people on based on, on whether they hit a mark? Where did this mark come from? Where did you invent that? Who told you there was a mark? Um, and so if we look at the, in the garden, Adam and Eve were, um, so, so the story of that is that there's a deceitful voice, which is the serpent. And the deceitful voice says, there's something you have to do to find yourself acceptable to God. And so to eat that fruit, that, that's the, the fruit is, the fruit is that word, that deceitful word. Um, to eat that fruit is to accept that and say, there must be something that I need to do in order for God to find me acceptable. And so now what that's done is that what that really says is, is you have a shortcoming and here's what you need to do to cover that shortcoming. And so that's the covering of the fig leaves is, is fig leaves are the religious works. The fig leaves are the attempts to cover the shortcoming. So sin was the identification that it says they were naked and they were not ashamed. And then it says their eyes were opened and they realized they were naked and they were ashamed. So naked is a shortcoming. Naked is a vulnerability. Naked is something that could be perceived as, as causing you to be less than ideal. So it's, it's easiest to think of it as a vulnerability or shortcoming is what nakedness means. Nakedness is the exposure. Nakedness is the vulnerability. So what happened was they had vulnerabilities. They had shortcomings. And religion hates that idea. They had shortcomings. They were not magically perfect human beings that could breathe underwater and fly through the sky and nothing ever died. They had shortcomings. But they had no focus on those shortcomings that caused them to think, like, you know, this is a problem. And so they had shortcomings, but they were not ashamed of them. Then their eyes were opened after receiving this deceitful word, after hearing that they had shortcomings and there was something they needed to do to cover those shortcomings. Now they had a focus on their shortcomings and they were ashamed and they were afraid of God, which is exactly what religion does to you. It says, here's your shortcomings. God doesn't like you the way you are. And it makes you ashamed and it makes you focus on your shortcomings. So if nakedness is your shortcomings and sin is a focus on shortcomings. We look at a, in Noah, uh, his one son came in and he said, hey, dad's drunk and passed out naked and broadcast that. And the other two sons said, you don't know what you're talking about and neither do we. Um, and so what happened was Religion even doesn't see this as wrong because religion is so focused on pointing out your shortcomings that it doesn't think that really the problem, the thing that he did wrong was that he said, hey, dad's drunk and passed out naked in the tent. That was it. That was the thing he did wrong. And so it invents something else that he did wrong. And religion has this obsession 
with putting sex into things where it's not there because sex is wrong even though the first commandment was be fruitful and multiply um but anyway so it invents this disgusting idea that what he did was he went in and he did stuff with his father um and that's what he did wrong no what he did wrong was that he said dad's passed out drunk and naked that was it. That was the thing he did wrong. He focused on shortcomings. He exposed his nakedness. So what the other sons did was they said, we refuse to acknowledge this. We refuse to acknowledge the shortcomings. We will not live that way in focusing on someone's uh, vulnerability. So what they did, and it's important because what they did involved a willful, deliberate uh act that said that was one of absolutely deliberately forcibly consciously making an effort to not look upon whether whether that report was accurate or not so they walked in backwards they refused to look upon maybe he was fully clothed maybe he was just asleep and not passed out maybe he wasn't drunk they refused to acknowledge it they would have no part in that they walked in backwards and they dragged a blanket upon, uh, across him and they came back out. They had no idea what the situation was. The only report they had of what the situation was came from the other brother. The one who focused on and broadcast the vulnerabilities. They refused to look on that. That would be like if someone came to me and said, you know, Debbie's, De Debbie is a heroin junkie. And I would say, you know, you don't know anything about that and neither do I. So, you know, why don't you go do something else? Why don't you go talk about something else? Why don't you, maybe you, maybe you've even got your own problems you can deal with instead. Don't worry about Debbie. Um, you know, it's a willful refusal to look upon people's shortcomings. I think that's what Paul meant when he said, I, I refuse to know any, I, I don't remember the wording, but I refuse to know anything except Christ and him crucified. He was actually saying that to the people he was writing to. He, said, he was saying, I refuse to acknowledge anything about you. I'm not going to look at your shortcomings, but I'm just going to focus on this message here, which is the one of Christ and him crucified. But anyway, so when, it, when we see this contrast of what sin is, sin in the legal definition is non-compliance to the law of Moses, non-compliance to the law of your denomination, non-compliance to whatever rules. But sin, according to grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, is to focus on shortcomings. Sin is to miss the mark, but sin by grace is to have a mark that you can miss. And that's really, that's the thing that religion hates, is to say the answer is not to keep practicing until you get better and better at hitting the mark. The answer is to take down the goddamn target and throw it the fuck out. 